Writing and balancing chemical equations. So um, in earlier chapters, we've looked at elements and atoms and molecules and compounds. Um, and we've looked a bit at their physical properties and how to name them and um, how to interpret chemical formulas. Um, but we haven't looked much at um, chemical changes or chemical reactions. And the way that we represent a chemical reaction is with a chemical equation. A, and a chemical equation um, uses chemical formulas to tell us about how those compounds have changed. So a balanced chemical equation uses symbolism to represent both the identities and the quantities of substances undergoing a chemical change. So um, here's an example of a chemical formula, or a chemical equation, excuse me. Um, the, the chemical equation has chemical formulas. So here's a chemical formula, CH4. Here's a chemical formula that we've seen, O2. Here's one CO2, H2O. So the formulas on the left side of this arrow here are called reactants. And the formulas on the left side are called, uh, excuse me, on the right side are called products. So um, CH4 is a formula for a compound that has one carbon atom and four hydrogen atoms. This is another representation of that CH4 molecule. The carbon is black and these H's are gray. So we have one carbon and one, two, three, four hydrogen atoms. Here is a representation of O2 as a chemical formula, and here's O2 as a uh, pictorial representation where we can see the atoms, two atoms of oxygen bonded together. CO2, CO2 as a space filling model up here. H2O as a chemical formula, and H2O as a space filling model. So this chemical equation is describing what happens when CH4 and O2 are brought together under the right conditions. Um, under the right conditions, these two molecules will react to form CO2 and H2O. So this is an example of a chemical change or chemical reaction. And in this chemical reaction, the atoms have changed places. So you see the carbon atom used to be surrounded by hydrogens. And now on the product side, the carbon atom is surrounded by oxygens. And on the reactant side, the oxygens are together, O2. And on the product side, the oxygens are kind of split up. And the oxygen has hydrogens on it now, and carbon over here. So what happens in a chemical reaction is that the bonds between atoms break, and new bonds are made. So um, when one thing that does not happen in a chemical reaction is that we don't create or destroy matter. So we can't create any new atoms, and I can't destroy any of the original atoms that were in the reaction. So when we look at this equation, you should see something that violates that principle. So here I have one carbon. And on this side, I have one carbon in the product side. So that works. On the reactant side, I have one, two, three, four hydrogens. And on the reactant side over here, I only have two hydrogens. On the reactant side here, I have two oxygens. But on the product side over here, I have one, two, three oxygens. So it seems like I've created an oxygen atom. The oxygen atom seems to have come from nowhere. And the hydrogen atoms, two of them have disappeared because there's only two hydrogens on this side, and I had four hydrogens on this side. So this is a chemical equation is like a recipe. So a recipe tells you the ingredients that you need and how much of each ingredient you need. So like if we're baking a cake, this would be like um, flour plus egg makes cake plus frosting or something, right? So that's like a, uh, a chemical equation is like a recipe. But what we don't get from, from this, the, what this is lacking is telling us how much of each ingredient we need and how much of each product we're going to get. So it says flour plus egg, but how much flour do I need? 
And how many eggs do I need? And how many cakes do I make? And how much frosting does that yield? So the ingredients, what we have written here, the reactants and products in a chemical equation are certainly a big part of a chemical equation. But the other big part that's missing is how much of each of these I need. Do I need one CH4 or two CH4s? Do I need one O2 or two O2s or three O2s? So I need to figure out um, how much of each ingredient goes into this recipe. So again, on, this, on the reactant side, I have four hydrogen atoms. And on the product side, I only have two hydrogen atoms. So this is called an unbalanced equation. I have to balance this equation. And the way that I balance it is by figuring out how many cups of flour and eggs I need, and how many cakes, and how much frosting I'm going to make. So I need, the, and the way that I represent that in a chemical equation is by writing a number in front of a chemical formula. So the subscripts that are part of a chemical formula, those tell me how many of the atom right before there are. So this is a subscript here, so I would look at the, the letter right before it, and that's an O. So that says that I have two oxygen atoms. That's how to interpret a subscript. Here's a two, and the letter right before it is O, so I have two oxygen atoms in this molecule. I have two hydrogen atoms in this molecule. So when there's a subscript in a chemical formula, that tells me how many atoms I have in a molecule. But when there's a number that comes out in front of the chemical formula, that tells me how many molecules I have. So this two in here, the subscript two, represents the fact that there are two oxygen atoms in this molecule. And this two out in front tells me that I have two of those molecules. Two O2 molecules. So how many oxygen atoms does this make? Four. Two times two. I have four oxygen atoms altogether. So we can see over here, um, the two here, the subscript two, implies that there are two hydrogen atoms on this molecule. And the two out in front, we call this a coefficient. The coefficient says that I have two H2O molecules. So I have two of these molecules instead of one. So now, I, if we count the atoms on each side, I have one, two, three, four hydrogen. One, two, three, four hydrogen. One, two, three, four oxygen. One, two, three, four oxygen. One carbon and one carbon. So this, now this reaction is balanced. Now this reaction does not violate the conservation of matter. So um, just writing the ingredients and just writing the reactants and the products in a chemical equation is not enough. I have to provide the coefficients that come out in front to tell me how many of those molecules I need. So since there's no coefficient written out in front of this one, I assume that that's one. So it's one CH4, two O2s, one CO2, and two H2Os. All right, so let's try to balance another equation. So here's an equation that's written without coefficients. The numbers that are provided in this equation are just subscripts to tell me uh, how many atoms are in a molecule. So this molecule right here, C3H8, has three carbons and eight hydrogens. But there's no number written out in front, so I don't know how many C3H8s I need. Do I need one? of these, or do I need two of these, or three, and so on. Same with the rest of these um, compounds. There's no number written out in front to tell me how many of each one I need. Now when we balance an equation, you're only ever going to change the coefficients. You can only change the numbers that come out in front of these compounds. You're not allowed to change the subscript. Because if you change the subscript, it's like changing the ingredients. And this, uh, this recipe says 
um, one cup of sugar plus or sugar plus butter makes cookies or something. If I change the subscript in here, then I'm changing it. So then it's not sugar anymore. Now I'm adding baking soda and butter. And that's not going to make cookies. That's going to make something different, right? So when we're, when we're balancing equations, I can add a number in front, a coefficient, but I can't change the subscripts because that would be changing the, the name of that molecule. It would be changing the ingredient to something else. And then the reaction's not necessarily true anymore because then it says baking soda plus butter makes cookies. And that's not the way to make cookies. So then the, the equation's not true for another reason. So when we start to balance an equation, the first thing to do is take inventory. So we should write down what elements there are on each side of the equation. There's C, H, and O on the reactant side. And there's C, H, and O on the product side. So my uh, atoms are C, H, and O. And we should write them down the side like this so we can um, keep track of which elements are in the equation. Then we'll draw a line right where the arrow is so that we can keep track of which uh, um, atoms are on the reactant side and which atoms are on the product side. So we're kind of, we're kind of making a grid like this is the way to imagine this. So how many carbons do I have on the left side? Three. How many hydrogens do I have on the left side? Eight. How many oxygens do I have on the left side? Two. So we just look at these subscripts. That tells us how many of each there are. On the right side, remember, if there's no subscript written here for carbon, we imagine that it's one. So I have one carbon atom, two hydrogen atoms, and one, two, three oxygen atoms. So the first step is just like this. It's called taking inventory. So I can um, keep track of how many atoms I have on each side, because as I start to change the equation and add coefficients in front, I'm going to change the number of atoms I have on each side. All right, uh, step two, we should find the element that only appears in the fewest number of reactants and products and start with that element first. So what I mean by that is on the left side, each element appears only once. I have carbon and hydrogen and oxygen on the left side, and they're only, um, carbon is only in this molecule, hydrogen is only in this molecule, and oxygen is only in this molecule. But on the product side, I have hydrogen in this molecule, and carbon is in this molecule, but oxygen is in this molecule and this molecule. Oxygen appears twice. Right? Oxygen is in both of these compounds on the right side. So if that's ever the case and there's an element, it appears in more than one compound, then you should save that element for last, or at least for later. Um, don't start with an element that appears in more than one compound on each side of the equation. So. Uh, hydrogen only appears here in the reactants, and hydrogen only appears here in the products, so we could start with hydrogen. Or carbon only appears here in the reactants, and carbon only appears here in the products, so we could start with carbon. So let's start with carbon. On the left side, I have three. This is from me taking inventory earlier. So on the right side, I had one, and if I put a three as a coefficient, now I have three carbons three carbons, three CO2. But I've also changed the amount of oxygen that I have. I had three oxygen, right? One, two, three. But if I put a three here, now I have three times two. So now I have six oxygen here from the CO2s plus one. So now I have seven oxygen atoms. So when you add a coefficient in front of a compound, you're changing not only the number of, of this first atom, but you're also changing the number of the second atom. You're adding an entire, you're adding another one of these molecules, or in this case, three of these molecules. So if I have three of these CO2 molecules, then I'm going to have three Cs, 
and six O's. And then plus one from the one that's over here on the water. So then I'd have seven altogether. All right. So let's do this one. Um, my carbons are already balanced. Check, check. They're both three, so that's good. That's what I'm looking for. Hydrogen. Uh, I have eight hydrogens on the reactant side and only two hydrogens on the product side. So if I put a four here and, and then I have four water molecules, four of these molecules, four times two is eight. So then I have eight hydrogen atoms on the product side. So um, if we put a four here, we'll put an eight here. And now the number of oxygens has changed again too. Remember I had seven. I had three times two, six, plus the one from water would be seven. But then I added three more waters, eight, nine, ten. Or if we could just want to look at this by itself, I have four times one. The subscript of oxygen is one. So there's four oxygen atoms right here, plus six oxygen atoms right here. So four plus six gives me 10 oxygen atoms on the product side. So now my hydrogens are matched. So the last step now is to, to match oxygen, to balance oxygen on each side. And remember, we saved oxygen for last because oxygen appears in both of these compounds on the product side. Makes it a little bit trickier to do that one. So if I've got 10 oxygens on the product side, then I need 10 oxygens on the reactant side. And oxygen only appears over here once. So if I put a 5 as a coefficient in front of O2, then I have 5 times 2, 10 oxygens on this side, and 10 oxygens on this side. So then all of my atoms are, are balanced. I have three carbons. And I have three carbons on this side, eight hydrogens on this side, and eight hydrogens on this side, and 10 oxygens. And then I have four plus six oxygen, so 10 oxygen. So then I have the same number and the same type of atoms on each side of the equation. So then we would say this equation is balanced. So here are the rules. Never change the subscripts. These numbers down here that are in red, those are um, like changing the ingredient in a recipe, which unless you're a really, really good chef, you can't just start changing ingredients willy nilly because you'll screw up the recipe. And same here, unless you're a really good chemist, you can't just change those subscripts to any number you want that'll, that'll fit the math because you, you might be putting ingredients together that don't go together, or you might be making ingredients that don't really exist. So those numbers are not for you to change. You, whenever you're given a problem to balance, those numbers will be provided for you and they're stuck and you can't touch them. But you can add numbers in front. That's what you're supposed to do when you balance. You add this number in front, and this number in front, and this number in front, and this number in front. That's what you do when you balance an equation. OK, number two, the coefficients, these blue numbers that you add in front, they must be whole numbers. We can't have a fraction of a molecule. I can't have down here, it says I have half of O2. Well, what does half of an O2 molecule look like? I'd slice it in half, and it's not O2 anymore. So that doesn't make sense. I can't have half of an O2 molecule. So these numbers have to be whole numbers down here. So right now, if I look at this equation, it seems balanced. Because on this side, I have one mercury atom. And on this side, I have one mercury atom. So one and one, good. On this side, I have one oxygen atom. And on this side, I have half of an O2, which is just one oxygen atom. So good, it's balanced. One mercury one oxygen atom. So although it's true that mathematically this is balanced, it's also true that I can't have half of a molecule 
So instead, we'll multiply this whole thing by 2 times 2. Because if I multiply this by 2, then that fraction, 1 half times 2, turns into 1. Um, and then it will become a whole number, like this. So if we have an equation where all of the coefficients are balanced, and you've already done the work to do it, but you have a fraction in that balanced equation, well, you don't have to start over and give up because you're, you're actually already done, because remember, this actually is already balanced. So if this is balanced, then multiplying it by 2 will be balanced also. And then I'll have a, a whole number ratio, 2 to 2 to 1. And this would be the simplest whole number ratio. So I must have at least one oxygen molecule, O2. I can't have half of an O2. So if that's the case, and I need at least one O2, and that means there must be two mercury atoms involved in this reaction. Okay, and finally, we want to make sure that our coefficients aren't too small, right? They, we don't want to have a half, but we also want to make sure that our coefficients aren't too big. So for example, up here, this, this one is balanced. I have one mercury and one oxygen on each side, so the numbers are balanced. Down here, I have four mercuries on the reactant side and four mercuries on the product side and four oxygens on the reactant side and two times two, which is four oxygens on the product side. So this is mathematically balanced. Four mercury, four mercury, four oxygen, four oxygen. But um, we, don't, we want these numbers to be the smallest whole number ratios possible. Um, so if it's possible to divide all of these numbers by the same number and reduce this without creating fractions, then we would be left with, with a simpler whole number ratio. So a 4 to 4 to 2 ratio is, this, is the same ratio as 2 to 2 to 1. And a 2 to 2 to 1 ratio is the same as 1 to 1 to 1 half. Those are all mathematically equivalent ratios, but I can't have half of an oxygen molecule, so I don't want to use that one. And 4 to 4 to 2 can be simpler. It can be 2 to 2 to 1. So it's better to have this, um, uh, it's the correct way to do this is to have whole number ratio, but have it be the smallest whole number ratio. So some other information that we see in chemical equations is um, these letters after the compounds. So you'll see here S in parentheses, L in parentheses, and uh, italics. Um, italic AQ in parentheses, italic G in parentheses. So, um, and by italic, remember what I mean is this, G uh, that's non-italicized is kind of straight up and down, and G in italics kind of goes sideways like this. So you'll usually see that these, um, uh, the letters that are in parentheses are in italics like that, they're kind of sideways. So the G stands for gas, the L stands for liquid, the S stands for solid, and the AQ stands for aqueous, which means that this compound right here, NaOH, is dissolved in a beaker full of water. So an aqueous solution is whatever this is plus water, because aqua is water, so aqueous means an, a solution with water. So this um, is solid sodium, this is liquid H2O, this is a solution in water of sodium hydroxide, and this is gaseous hydrogen, hydrogen gas. Um, sometimes we also see symbols um, to, that are necessary conditions for a reaction to occur. So for example, sometimes reactions don't occur without heat. So um, calcium carbonate, solid calcium carbonate, can decompose into solid calcium oxide and gaseous carbon dioxide, but it won't do that at room temperature. It needs to be heated up. So if we heat calcium carbonate, then this reaction occurs. So this symbol right here, a triangle, also called a delta, 
above the reaction arrow, um, or even sometimes below the reaction arrow. But if you see a triangle above or below the reaction arrow, that implies that this reaction is being heated up. 